Hey all, my name is Kyle and I'm going to be attending Princeton University in the fall. So after posting my reaction videos, I saw a lot of comments and I got a lot of DMs asking me for advice on the college application process. So I decided to make a video. I'm going to keep this video relatively serious because I know that college apps are a really stressful time. Obviously there's a lot of things I can't cover in 15 to 20 minutes, so these are some of the more general things that I want you guys to know. Why did it take me so long to make this? I'd love to say that it's because everybody's starting their college apps now, so I wanted to put this video out, you know, at this time, but personally going into the application process, I didn't know anything, and so I was really confused about all of it, so I know how you guys feel right now. But I just want to say that I believe in all of y'all. Anyways, I thought I'd give you guys some tips on things that I personally wish I knew when I was applying, and I'm going to keep this kind of general because I'm going to cover a lot of ground. Um, and so I'm going to organize this video by sections on the Common App, and I'm going to start with like just really general stuff. The logistical side is horrendous. I had to make like 50 phone calls to understand some of this stuff, and so hopefully what I tell you guys is going to save you some time and confusion. Alright, so first, Common App is the application platform. Um, most schools will accept the Common App. Some schools like MIT have their own portal. Um, if you want to apply to a public Texas school, you have to use an application system called the Apply Texas, and for UCs, you have to use the UC system. So basically, for each school that you apply to, you're going to submit two things the Common App, and then the Supplemental Application. The Common App is going to refer to like your personal statement, demographics, activities list, honors, awards, and stuff like that. And the goal is that it's common to all these colleges. The Supplemental Application to each school is like your intended major, your supplemental essays, and things like that, that are more specific to each school. So basically, you're going to submit the Common App, and then you're going to submit the Supplemental Application for each school. And yes, you can change your Common App between schools. So like if you wanted to put these five awards for Harvard and these five awards for Princeton, you can do that. So once you do all that, you're going to get an email to your application portal, which is what you guys see whenever we're opening decisions. They're going to basically have you activate it and then you can like upload extra documents, you can check to see if everything's submitted, um, and most importantly, it's where you open your decisions. Now on to resumes. There's not a designated section on the Common App itself to put their resume. I know some people will submit it in the additional information section, but the format's kind of jank, so I didn't do that. Some schools like Brown and Vanderbilt let you upload a resume in their supplemental application, but for most schools, you're going to be submitting it on the application portal. So if you choose to submit standardized testing, most of the top 20 private colleges let you self-report, um, and you don't have to like send it from College Board or anything. The only two exceptions that I know are Rice and Princeton, so at the time of application, you're going to have to send those scores from College Board. But like, I heard some people did it and still got in, so I don't even know. For the other schools, basically you can self-report, and then if you get in and you enroll, then they're going to ask you for like proof, and that's when you send the official score report from College Board or whatever. Lastly, for the general section, there's something called Slide Room, which is where you submit music supplements, art supplements, supplements. It's basically another platform where you can log in and submit videos for the AOs to consider. And I used it for most of my applications to submit music supplements. So how do you choose if you want to apply ED, REA, or EA in the early round? Well, first of all, not all the schools offer all these options. For example, Harvard only offers REA, Columbia only offers ED, um, UChicago offers ED and EA. So make sure you look for that and make sure that whatever school you're applying to has the early option that you want. Um, so first, this one's kind of a no-brainer, but if your dream school offers ED, then apply ED. Applying ED is binding, meaning that if you get in, you have to go, you have to sign like a contract or something, and it increases your chances by like two to three times. So if your dream school offers ED, do it. So on the other hand, if you want to apply EA or REA because you have commitment issues, then I would suggest you to apply to your top school. I know a lot of elite applicants who get into a school EA or REA, but then get in nowhere RD. So apply to your top choice rather than trying to like game the chances and see like which EA school do I have a better shot at. Now the tricky part is if you don't know whether to apply ED or EA. So if you think your reach schools or your dream school is a really long shot, then apply for ED. Like if you really like UPenn, UChicago, or Columbia, and you think it's a far shot, then apply ED because their ED has a big advantage. Now, if you feel even somewhat remotely decently confident that you can land a school at the same level as your possible ED school, then I would not apply ED. I know that all of my friends who got an EA still sort of regret it a little bit because even though they really love that school, they're still really curious about what would have happened if they applied to other schools in RD. Now, obviously take this with a grain of salt because there's a lot of personal preference here. It's just my personal preference to take the risk of going for a higher choice rather than possibly settling for a lower choice. But overall, definitely apply somewhere early because no matter how slight, there's definitely an advantage and it'll make you a lot less stressed in the spring. 
All right, so courses and grades. Um, if you're a junior or senior right now, this obviously won't apply to you as much, but for freshmen and middle schoolers, there's some really important things that I want you to know for course selection. I think the most important thing is to choose challenging courses, whether it's AP or IB, for the major that you're gonna put on the Common App. Speaking of which, what you put on the Common App isn't binding in any way. Um, I applied as a biochem or a chem major for most of my schools, and I'm not sure if I'm going to do that right now, so mine's changed and that's okay. So if you want to put biology as your major on your applications, make sure you take AP Bio. If you're going to apply as an English major, make sure you take AP Literature. I know that a lot of people take 10, 15, even 25 APs, but trust me, it's really not required. Colleges want students to challenge themselves academically. So yes, do take harder courses if your school offers them, but don't feel pressured to cram AP classes just to get a 5.0 GPA. Okay, so ECs are the biggest part of your application. It's basically what you're doing outside of school. And this is a big part of where holistic review comes in. See, colleges want to evaluate who you are as a person, and your grades are just a part of that. ECs are going to show what you actually dedicate your time to. Obviously, all of us come from different backgrounds. Some of us have family obligations, whether it's working a part-time job for financial support, or having to take care of a grandparent, and AOs know that there's only 24 hours in a day. But if you can, my advice for this section is to focus on one area. Make sure you enjoy it, because if you enjoy it, you're going to be much better at it. But yes, try to focus on one area, whether it's music, research, volunteering, leadership, sports, politics, or whatever. So the goal here is to show commitment to the activity and achievement in the activity. I'm sure you've all heard this before, but colleges really do want students with a spike rather than well-rounded students. Because if colleges pick a lot of well-rounded students, they're just going to have a class that's pretty average at everything, but if they choose students with a spike, they can piece together the students they want to make a really good class. As for school clubs, they're great, but I would suggest keeping it to two or three because there's so many presidents of so many clubs and so many high schools that what really makes you stand out is what you do outside of school. So if you haven't yet, then you should check out my essays video. Um, I have a little bit more specific advice in that one, but some things that I'll say in this video are as cliche as it sounds, make sure that you show your personality. Try to be who you are rather than who you think colleges want you to be. When you read your personal statement to yourself, make sure that you can see clear themes of growth and reflection. So in addition to the big personal statement, every school is gonna have supplemental essays. So depending on what school, it ranges from like one to 11. And I applied to like 18 academic colleges. And so there's a lot, I think it added up to about 70. The good news is that all of these colleges often have like overlaps in some of these supplemental essays, so make a really detailed chart about the different topics that there are. Some common ones are why this major, why this college, um, how are you going to contribute to the community, an extracurricular activity you did, or an example of community service that you did. So the hardest essays are the ones that are going to differentiate you from the others. I'll say that again. The hardest essays that you have to write are going to be the ones that differentiate you from the others. I know that everybody does not want to write the UChicago ones because they're really weird. But if you do well on them, I promise it's going to be worth it. If you don't know where to start, type something down. Just word vomit onto the page. The first drafts are always bad, trust me. That's what they're for. But once you have something written down, it's so much easier to edit and go back and add more, better details. Now another essay that can really push you over the top is the Y College essay. Ultimately, you want to show the college that you belong there. So if you write a good essay for this one, your chances just shot up a lot. And that means you have to do your research, understand their best departments, understand the opportunities you have, the professors, research. So show them that you're gonna use their resources and that you're worth the investment. So SATs and stuff are getting more complicated every year because my class was test optional, the next year is test optional, and who knows what it's gonna be in the future. As a general rule of thumb though, if your SAT or ACT score is in the same quote unquote category as your school grades, I'd submit it. There's no harm in doing that. Obviously on the flip side, if it's too low, then I wouldn't. I know personally, I stressed about every 10 points on the SAT, but basically a 1550 and a 1600 are the same in the AO's eyes. In terms of how many times you should take it, I'd limit it to probably two, um, unless you can guarantee that you're gonna increase your score by 60 or so points. Now I have a lot of specific tips on how I got a 1600 in my first try, and I can do that in another video if you want, but for now, I'm just gonna say that it's really important to practice. All these tests are basically made of the same types of questions, same types of passages, and once you do like five to 10 really good practice tests, you're gonna basically know what they're looking for and how to answer the questions the way that they want you to. 
Um, so this is my second to last section, and I'm just going to give you guys some really overarching tips. First of all, do not check Reddit or College Confidential. There's really no point in doing it. It's just going to bring you a lot of unnecessary stress. I think this year there's a whole rumor on College Confidential about the color of the tulip that appeared on Duke's portal. Um, it meant nothing. It never does. Um, number two, start earlier than you think you should. I'm pretty sure every single college YouTuber says, oh, I started this essay a week before the deadline and I turned it in and somehow it worked. And while the bulk of your best writing might happen in the second to last week, start thinking about your comment app now. You don't have to write anything. Just look at the prompts and think about possible things that you might write about so that, you know, if someday when you're working out and the idea just hits you, you can jot it down on the doc somewhere. All right, number three. So after you submit your applications, the next three to four months are probably going to be one of the most stressful periods of time in high school. Waiting when you know that there's nothing you can change is really, really nerve wracking and time passes by so slowly. But try to find a new hobby or something. Make a reaction video. You can start editing it, watch a show, learn to draw, learn to cook, learn to drive or just anything else. Because once you put your mind to something else at a school, it makes the time pass really quickly. Try not to stress too much about whether or not you get an interview. Um, it really is pretty random. I think I got interviews for like half my schools and whether or not I got an interview or not, I got like an even split between accepted, rejected, and waitlisted. So I'm not exactly sure if that means anything too much. However, if you get an interview late, that's usually a pretty good sign. So, you know. Also, keep in mind that if you do have an interview, the interviewers aren't trying to mess you up. They're not trying to make sure that, oh, this kid can't go to our college for some reason. These interviewers are alumni who are volunteering their time just because they want to get to know you guys. So just treat it like a formal but informal conversation and it should be good. My last bit is really, really important. I know that all of you watching this right now are really nervous and really stressed. Trust me, I was in your shoes. If you watched my reaction video, you know how nervous I was before every single decision. And I also know that everybody says what I'm about to say, and it holds a lot less merit because I got into Princeton. But trust me, it fades away. I mean, yes, I do still smile every time I think about how lucky I am that I got into Princeton. But my entire mindset has shifted from what college to what I'm going to do in college. Even before Princeton, when it was just my safety school, I got really excited about all the opportunities and things that I could do at the college, the people I can meet, and things like that. Regardless of what college we end at, the experience is going to be so vastly different from high school that there's always going to be so many things to be excited about. Again, I know you might think that, oh, of course he can say that, he's going to an Ivy. But even halfway through the application season, I was just really excited that I was going to college and I'd really learned to love a lot of the options I already had. Obviously, I was still really nervous on Ivy Day because, you know, dream schools and stuff, but it's sort of like a, it'd be really nice, but it's okay if I don't. And, you know, I say that sometimes as a coping mechanism, but it really did feel like that. I know I went on a super long rant just now, but hopefully the things that I said in this video helped you guys and answer some of the questions you had. Y'all are amazing, please stay strong. I know it's really stressful, but I believe in y'all and I'm rooting for you all. Um, let me know if you have like really specific questions and I can try to make a part two. All right, thanks for watching and I'll see y'all next time. But you are so much better.